Good morning. I'm Ellen Siegel, Acting Chair of Reagan Udall, and welcome to our third public meeting. So we're very excited that you're here, and we have um, an interesting program, and hopefully we'll familiarize you with Reagan Udall, what we do, what our charter looks like, and more importantly, what we're doing now. Uh, I first want to start by welcoming all of our board members and having you, each one of you individually, read, um, uh, introduce yourselves. I can't see from this angle, so we'll start, um, uh, you know, uh, start with you, Georges, and then, of course, Lisa. Hi, I'm uh, Georges Benjamin. Um, I'm currently the Executive Director of the American Public Health Association. I'm Lisa Roman, FDA liaison to the foundation, but I'm here this morning because Dr. Hamburg was called away. She sends her regrets and I'm sorry she couldn't make it. Good morning. I'm Alan Cockle. I'm with the Pew Charitable Trust and I oversee drug and medical device programs here. Good morning. I'm Shereen Gabriel. I'm currently Dean of Mayo Medical School, a rheumatologist and epidemiologist there. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Rich Shilsky. I'm a medical oncologist. I'm the chief medical officer of the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Good morning. I'm Mark McClellan. I'm a senior fellow and the director of the program on healthcare innovation and value at the Brookings Institution. Hi, and I'm Jane Reese Colburn. I'm the executive director of the Reagan Udall Foundation. <coughs> I'm Kay Holcomb. I'm senior vice president for health policy at the Biotechnology Industry Organization. Gary Neal, Head of Research and Development at Medgenics, a biotech doing gene therapy. And I'm, I'm, I'm Carlos Angulo. I'm an attorney at Zuckerman Spader here in Washington, and I'm outside counsel to Reagan Udall. And on the phone? Pachi, can you introduce yourself? <clears throat> Hi, I'm Pachi Yamada. I'm Chief Medical and Scientific Officer at Takeda Pharmacy. And is Nick on the phone? No. Okay, well, uh, if I had looked at the slides, I would have seen that it was our third um, annual uh, public meeting. Okay, so what we're going to do uh, today is give you an overview of the foundation, um, update on major projects. We're going to talk about IMEDS, Critical Path, predicting, predicting Tox, uh, Alzheimer's, future directions, and more importantly, uh, towards the end of the session, there is time for public comment. We welcome comment and we welcome your views. This is important to us. Um, we're very transparent and we want to hear from you. Um, so uh, for those that are not familiar, <coughs> I'll take you back a little bit to the legislation in our history. We were created in 2007 uh, and uh, it, in response to the FDA science and mission at risk. Um, the important uh, thing to remember is that um, FNIH has had a board, um, a very similar board for I think now 15 years, maybe 20 years, and CDC has a board. So this is was really important. It was a long time in coming, so we're very pleased about it. But, uh, but it did come from legislation in 2007. Um, our mission is quite easy. It's really... And simple. We're not advisory to the FDA. It's to support the um, science mission of the FDA, uh, to foster public-private partnerships and to work collaboratively with the agency and with the community towards getting better answers for patients and some of the regulatory um, safety issues of food and most importantly to collaborate with the public and to do it in a very transparent way. Um, um, the governance is 17 member board. Um, and this was, by the way, legislated. They the leg the legislation was very careful to make uh, to to make sure the community and all stakeholders were represented. So this is the um, this comes directly from the uh, legislation, and then the ex officio or the commissioner of the FDA and the. Uh, and the uh, director of the uh, NIH. And that's, by the way, the same on the F uh, Foundation for NIH board. We have the same. Um, uh, trans <coughs> transparency, we have an annual public meeting. 
Let me say just to make sure I, yeah. Okay, a website provides information, policies and procedures uh, uh, to protect against conflict of in interest and input for suggestions via foundation staff and website. Okay, and here's our website. And that's all. Now we're going to really go to our financials and go to the program. So again, just quickly, we're going to go over the financials and all of our projects one by one, and there'll be sufficient time to go over the, uh, to get questions. Thank you. George's. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Ellen. So we, wanted, we thought it would be useful um, to kind of give you an overview of how we've been funded and where our revenue comes from and where our expenses have gone. Um, over the last uh, few years. Remember, this was an annual update, so we're going from basically 2009 to 2013. Um, suffice to say, we didn't have much revenue the first couple of years of, of the foundation, so this basically gives you a feel of what it looks like. So you can see that about a little more than 22% of our funding comes from government, 44% uh, from industry, and the other 33% um, year to date has come from uh, foundation associations and, and uh, about 1%. Um, has some individuals, um, both um, individual board members and others who have provided that funding. Um, and then this gives you a feel for where our expenses go. And as you can see, it's very project related. So about 49% uh, goes to the IMS project, uh, uh, a little more than a third to core operations uh, fellowship, which we just started, and you'll hear about that today. Um, and then about 10% from a Gates related uh, funding project that we've had. Is going to the next slide? Mm, Is that the one? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that, that just gives you a, a pretty good idea of what our, um, where our funding came from and where it goes. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Alan. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. You have only one microphone? Mm -hmm. so, okay. Well, anyway, uh, thank you, Georges. Um, so now I go uh, to introduce Jane, and Jane is going to talk about um, our projects and then get you to um, uh, Troy. Okay, I just want to do a quick intro. Um, a couple people have asked questions about, you know, how do we come up with projects? And um, I just want to kind of run through what our process is before something becomes a project. And so, you know, we obviously start with an idea, and that can come from the Reagan Udall board, it can come from the FDA, it could come from any of you. Um, there's nothing magical about where it comes from. But the first thing we do is we um, kind of look at the, what I call the lay of the land. So who's working in that space? What are they doing? Um, what kind of disciplines, scientific disciplines and other um, are there? And then um, we also then connect at that point to folks at the FDA that are relevant to that project. So Lisa helps us with that and we figure out, or sometimes it's multiple parts of the FDA. And then we start narrowing the scope. So we're looking at, in, in terms of the idea, what are the unmet needs? Um, what's gonna be key to making progress? What are the most important things that need to happen? And then where does Reagan Udall add value? You know, what do we uniquely bring to the picture? Um, and so um, as we think about those things in, in the light of kind of the lay of the land, then we kind of finalize the scope. And at that point, the board this board um, signs off and, and we get a sign off from the FDA that this is something they're interested in. But really our relationship with the FDA, we talk back and forth at every point. It's really kind of iterative. Um, and then finally, um, we start to, once we have the finalized scope, then we get into identifying the folks we think ought to be actual partners. Most of our projects um, end up being public-private partnerships for the most part. And so um, based on the lay of the land and all the folks we've identified and the people we've talked to trying to understand the subject matter, we then come up with um, specific partners. And there's a whole process for doing that we'll talk about later. Um, funders, of course. And our goal for funding all of our projects is trying to create a mix of uh, government, not-for-profit, and industry funding. We are allowed to take all, but we try to get a mix of all of those things. Some projects lend themselves to one end of the spectrum or the other more than others, but generally we're trying to do that. And then staffing, you know, project management and governance. We have a model that you'll see in IMEDS, which includes a steering committee and a scientific advisory committee that in a way mimics the um, representation you see up on the board where we have lots of seats for different stakeholders. 
And then once we've put that together, and then we do you know, your typical project management project plan. So there is a lot of upfront work. It, it doesn't actually take as much time as you might think, but uh, we feel that we need to do that kind of uh, due diligence and uh, make sure we really understand the issue. And, and probably one of the biggest issues, we want to make sure we're not replicating something someone else is doing, and we're doing something where we can uniquely add value. So with that overview, I think we'll turn to um, the IMEDS project. <clears throat> 